Hi, I'm Shal from Pangolin Photo Safaris and in this video I would like to give you a few tips on what to look out for when buying a second-hand DSLR camera. Every year new cameras get released and a lot of photographers upgrade to the newest technology in an instant. This doesn't mean when they sell the cameras they're any bad and in most cases some of these bodies has hardly been used. This means that you can get a really good second-hand camera body for a good price. In this video, I will point out where to look out for second-hand camera gear, what questions you should ask the previous owner of the camera, how to inspect a camera or second-hand camera body before you purchase it, and how you can benefit from a second-hand camera. But before I start, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe by clicking on the bell icon and you will be notified on a weekly basis when we upload a new video. Now you might ask, why should you buy a second hand camera from someone you don't know? How can you benefit from that? Well, if you are a beginner and your intention is to become a photographer, second-hand camera is a great way to start off in a less expensive way. For example, often you will find a second-hand pro-level camera for very similar price as a new mid-range or amateur camera. Like this Nikon D500, which is an excellent pro-level camera that sells second-hand for just over a thousand dollars. Whereas a new Nikon D7500 body that is less advanced costs basically the same amount. Or maybe you are a student and have a small budget but still want the quality of a pro-level camera. And lastly, second-hand camera gear is also great for second body as backup. So where can you find second-hand DSLRs? Of course, big camera stores like b &H that everybody knows sells new gear as well as second-hand. This is a pretty safe option as big companies like b &H can't afford unhappy clients. And therefore, they make sure that all second-hand camera gear are checked and tested by technicians. These technicians will then rate the product after inspection and this will determine what the price of the product will be depending on the condition. And with these stores you also get 90 days and sometimes up to 6 months warranty which is great. If you are buying from online retailer stores that you haven't heard from before, I suggest you do some background check on Google about this company. You can type review or scam and the company's name and usually if somebody was scammed they would write something bad about the site. You can also check the authenticity of this website by using online verification services like urlavoid.com or Google Transparency Report. If you can't find anything in one of these big camera stores like b &H, there are also other platforms you can utilize like Facebook, eBay, Gumtree or Amazon. Amazon for example give ratings of the sellers which can help you to see if they are trustworthy and you also see the images of the product immediately. Just be careful for internet copied photos of the product instead of real life photos. You just need to be a little bit more careful on these platforms. If something looks too good to be true, the chances are good it is. Let's get into what to look out for. I would ask a couple of questions first, just to get the idea around the camera and the owner, as this could already give you a good or bad feeling about the deal. Why are you selling the camera? What did you use the camera for? Are you the original owner of the camera? Have you done any repairs on the camera? What is the shutter count of the camera? 
And if you cannot meet the seller in person, then he can send you just a few detailed photos of the camera body. Especially the shutter count is an important question to ask as this is like your car's kilometer or mileage on the clock. A shutter counter is recording every single image you've taken with your camera, basically stating how hard your shutter have worked. Every camera have a different lifespan on the shutter before they will break. For example, your entry level cameras are around 50,000 shutter counts, your mid-range camera bodies maybe around 100,000 and then your pro level cameras anything from 150, 200 all the way up to 500,000 photos. Please insist to the person selling you the camera that it gives you the shutter count that can either be found in your camera's menu itself or established by third party apps or online platforms like shutter check or shutter count. Best case scenario of course is to be in a situation where you can meet up with the person that you buy from so that you can have a full inspection of the camera before you seal the deal. So there's a few things that you can check yourself when you have the camera in your hand. First of all just look around the body just to see if there's no any bad bumps or dents or bad scratches on the screens. Before you switch on the camera maybe take out the battery first just to see if there's no not any corrosion inside. Signs of that means maybe water damages so that will be important thing to know. You can then switch on the camera, see if the display on top is working and the one in the back. Maybe turn all the wheels on the top and on the back, see if they're working properly. Press all the buttons, so these buttons when you press them should give you some indication on the screen if they're working. Maybe go through all the manual settings here just to see if they all are working. If you have a flash, maybe go to see if the flash at least pops up. Surely you will have a card slot inside. Some cameras might have to make sure that both are working. And then maybe a good thing to take with you, if the seller maybe doesn't have it already with, <coughs> is to take a lens with. So the idea with the lens is that you can see if the connections is working properly and to test the autofocus. Although the autofocus motor is inside your lens, you will see in, when you, in front of your camera you have these copper pins. Now these copper pins is giving the signal between the lens and the camera. So if they are badly damaged then you might, you won't have any connection between the lens and the camera. This means that your autofocus probably won't work. So you can then look through your viewfinder also to see if the viewfinder is nice and clean as it, this is also a very difficult thing to clean. So make sure that this is nice and clean. You can see through autofocus. Make sure you go focus something far, something close to see how quickly the focusing is working or is it working at all. Then take a couple of shots, maybe you can go to your fast shooting as well just to see if it is going fast, you don't hear anything bad there. You can also then shake the camera and see if you find anything that's loose. Another thing that you can do is put your camera also at f16 or 22 and look into the sky, take a few photos. This exercise you can then see if your sensor is very dirty. If you have a lot of spots on the picture it means you have a dirty sensor that needs to be clean. So either you can ask the seller to reduce the price so that you can do it yourself or insist that the seller do it then for you. So these are just a few things that you can check yourself when deciding on buying maybe a second hand camera. If there's any red flags, things that doesn't look right to you, maybe reconsider and looking to buy maybe another camera. Also insist on the seller that always meet in a public place, maybe where there's uh, more people, a lot of people, it was always safe. And then if you've ever bought the second hand camera, let us know your experience in the comments down below. If you have maybe any tips that involve our topic. Thank
Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.